Hello reformers and welcome back to Warsword Conquest and Slive is currently on the border of Empire territory. Well, kind of. Kind of. Now, what has been going on is that Blutdorf was just under siege by a couple of Empire vassals. I don't know where they went. They apparently just disappeared. I was on my way here to fight them because I actually have a pretty large army at the moment and uh, as you may see where my cursor is right now I have 79 Skaven skirmishers. I've been leveling those guys up into well obviously Scryer Gunners and then Poisoned Wind Globadias as uh, obviously I didn't have too many of those because most of them leveled up into Warplock Engineers and obviously those guys They've been dying quite a bit because I don't have a good setup to deal with the Wood Elves. So what I'm going to do, mm, I'm going to try, if I can, to get about 75 of each unit. And if I can, I would like to be able to get a pretty considerable backlog as well. So basically having some reinforcements if the worst were to happen. Now you can see here, I don't know whether you noticed in the text log just there, that the Dwarves have been completely eliminated. And it seems like they have been eliminated by none other than the Orcs. Okay, interesting. I actually wouldn't have imagined that the Orcs would have such a strong offensive capability, but apparently they do. Anyway, I am going to be making my way. Yes, I'm also going to be ignoring most villages that, you know, become raided or whatever, because at the moment, we can't really spare the time, to be honest. We kind of have to just go and take things. Otherwise, we are going to be, as I've been doing for the past hour, actually. I've been doing some off-screen, of course. And, uh, yeah, actually, uh, some, some cool stuff happened. Obviously, nothing, nothing too great. I did a couple of tournaments. I actually did two tournaments. And uh, I thought, yeah, why not? Because uh, someone let me know in the comments, actually, that there are... Well, I think we do know about it, actually, but... Uh, yeah, I think you, you gave me some extra details on it. And basically Cyrus, I believe the guy's name is Cyrus or something like that. He has amazing gear for extremely expensive prices if you can win 10 tournaments. And I've won two so far, obviously. And uh, it's kind of a bit difficult, you see, because there's not many places that I can actually participate in tournaments nowadays because I'm currently at war with so many people so I was very lucky to find one in Skaven territory and then I also found one in Goblin territory but otherwise that was it and uh, the other places that I needed to go to were Lizardman territory and Nippon territory and that is very very far away there's no way I will be able to get over there and even if I was gonna get over there without having any of my thieves come under siege then uh, we would also have a problem with the fact that they are at war against us, of course. And uh, yeah, what I've done is I've also sent off Nagrat to go and speak to the High Elves. I think maybe the High Elves might actually decide to give me a bit of a break, perhaps. Who knows? I don't know whether they're really going to, but well, we're going to try anyway. And uh, yeah, I did not switch up my magic for this particular siege because I've been doing so many field battles and I forgot. Oh well, never mind. My... Ball and chain will have to be the thing that we rely on the most in this siege. I don't even know whether I really need to even bother, to be honest, to actually do any damage myself, because you can see how many units have already perished, thanks to our insane ranged damage. And uh, new enemies have arrived. I'm actually kind of... Mm, you know what? I think we should probably just leave everything how it is. I'm going to move my people just a little bit closer, you know, just a little bit. And uh, if only I had my pistol right now. If I had my pistol right now, I could actually get a couple of kills. And, uh, oh yeah, I've actually leveled up and I was saving it for the video, actually. So, uh, yeah, I also have the opportunity to get to 30 intelligence, finally. And that will give me that extra point in magic and pathfinding and will be in a very powerful position when it comes to using our spells and everything. So I'm actually just going to wait off here to the side while my engineers fire away as much as, well, rattly possible? Yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work, does it? Scavenly. Mm, maybe, that, maybe that's a little bit more in keeping. 
Alright, so I've actually retreated and come back in here. I did not die, I just stood by the wall over there and just waited for our fellows to run out of ammunition. And amusingly enough, it appears as though there's many more units in the garrison here than we had previously seen, because we eliminated in the previous round about 160 of the enemy's units, and now we have another 60 to deal with. And I think we had about... I thought there was about 180 here plus 26, so it should really have only been about 210. But for some reason, it feels like they have reinforcements coming out of nowhere. They're coming out of the walls, I tell you. Yeah, there's a reference. Otherwise, I think we're I think we're pretty good actually, because you can see here it seems like the new reinforcement wave. I mean, another 70 on top of that. Another 70 on top. So in other words, they had what 240. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, I'm going to tell my infantry and everything to charge in here, even though our archers are doing a perfectly acceptable job. I would like to get a, uh, a little bit of a head start at eliminating the other units that are hiding away in the keep itself. And then once we've done that, we will be able to have a very, very simple time of moving on from here and going to the next castle. I am not entirely sure which one that is. I haven't really scouted out anything further than this one, because initially I thought to myself, okay, th this might be a bit difficult, dependent on the layout. And I thought, let's just take it one step at a time. And uh, this is obviously the first one that we are attempting to take. And I think the next one, mm -hmm, it might actually be a town. I have taken a look at the nearby town of Nuln, and uh, that still has those dwarven vassals in the garrison there, so obviously we will be unable to take that until they vacate. And now that the dwarves are potentially eliminated from the game, they might be leaving pretty soon. And then I think we might have might have a pretty decent shot at taking that town, but it does have a kind of, well, a difficult layout. So that might be a bit of a problem, but yes, as you can see here, Eshen assassins are absolutely fantastic at working behind enemy lines, and I mean, they should be. They are assassins after all. Anyway, there you go. A nice victory for us. And, oh, hello there. I, I am apparently freeing a Chaos Dwarf. There we go. Oh, that's pretty good, I suppose. Um, everyone likes us. Everyone likes us for that. Uh, apparently, Bulzar... Bullzar the Scorched really likes us. Look at that. He's got 25 relation with us. That's pretty crazy. Anyway, there you go. Okay, so now here's the greatest thing about this particular castle. They had so many units in here for rescuing, and uh, I have no idea what to take, to be honest. I have no idea about Chaos Dwarf units. I have not ever taken a look at them. They do have some pretty cool ones. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure whether I should take any of these, to be honest. Take the fire glaives, I guess. I mean, I don't have that much space left over. What about some annihilators? Uh, oh, wow, those inferno guys look pretty crazy. I mean, according to their weekly wage, at the very least. Then we, of course, have demon slayers here. Do we have any other skaven units? No, it seems like they don't. They do have some chaos trolls here, so I guess I'll take some of those. And what else do we want here? Well, I guess I could take the giant slayers... The Iron Breakers and the Demon Slayer, and then we have one space. It doesn't really matter what we take, to be honest. I mean, we have so many in the garrison right now as it is that it's really not going to make too much difference. All right, so we could just take that. There's not much loot that I really want to take here. Obviously, winning those two tournaments did give me about 9,000 each time, which is pretty good. Otherwise, as you can no doubt see, I've actually given Lord Measles an extra castle because he's actually starting to patrol around now, which is kind of amazing. So... I thought, okay, let's, uh, you know, give him a little castle just to give him, uh, you know, give him a bit of a reward, I guess. Otherwise, this is going to be given to Lord Valance because he's doing a fantastic job. I don't know whether you saw there. I, I don't think you did. I think it was off screen time, actually, when I was rebuilding the ladders here. But he was defeated in battle. And uh, that just tells me that he's doing a good job because he that, it means that he's patrolling around. And even though he did get defeated... That's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes people get defeated, and uh, yeah, he is a he is a vassal with only about 120 units and so, or so. So if we, if we just continue to give him that snowball power, where we can just continue giving him fiefs, continue giving measles fiefs, and then eventually they will have 
incredibly strong armies. And as you can see here, we have 27 Warplock Engineers ready to level up, but I'm obviously not going to do that just yet until we reach such a critical mass of Poisoned Wind Globideers that we'll be okay in dealing with any wood elf castle because let me let me tell you i'm i'm well in i'm all in basically on those wood elves i'd like to try and eliminate them as, as best i can but uh yeah obviously they're going to be kind of difficult to deal with for the moment we do have a couple of kislev vassals here i don't know they don't really want to fight me i don't think they probably don't okay so hmm next place to go i i, I mean i could go and scout over in this town but I don't know whether I really want to. Do I really want to do that? I mean, I'm pretty sure that they're going to take one of my castles pretty soon, so if I can take another one and get like a two for one, then I think we'll be in a pretty decent position. But apparently I'm being attacked here. Oh, okay. This is a pretty large battle. Okay. This might be a bit problematic. 43 Renown is our reward. That's kind of big. That must mean that there are some very strong units on the enemy's side. And that means that we actually have to play this properly. We can't just, you know, randomly go like, Oh, we'll just charge in your ranged units. No, you can't actually do that here. Well, at least I can't. But uh, yeah, let's have a look and see what we can do. Obviously, we have a lot of ranged units, and that means that we will need a good deal of time before the enemy gets to us for them to actually do stuff. So let's see if that can actually help us out. Uh, wow. Okay, so apparently Zarina Katarina is able to cast some very deadly looking spells and also extremely good defensive spells as well. A bit worried about that to be honest. And I'm a bit worried in general about this particular fight because we are not eliminating units as fast as we potentially should be. And that is not good. How are our units doing actually? Yeah, yeah, they need to come over here a little bit more, in my opinion. I really don't have enough... Oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, it did take a little bit of damage there, but yeah. I'm going to need to use Bless with Filth, I think. Can I please have... There we go. That's a little bit better. That's what we need. Okay. So hopefully our ranged units will actually inflict poison when they hit. I think that would be kind of nice. As you can see, I'm moving kind of slowly because of the frost spells that they're using against us. I'm going to try and use Wither here as well, if I can. I don't know whether I was in range for that, actually, so that's maybe not great. But anyway, let's cast Vermintide. Okay, never mind, that failed. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay, well, uh, uh, there we go. We're actually starting to kill things now. We're actually starting to kill things, so that's pretty good. Oh yes, Poisoned Wind Globadiers. I mean, really, I don't know what I was doing without them, to be honest. My army co my army composition was not exactly smart. I mean, obviously, having a huge amount of Warplock Engineers, that's all very well and good, but if you don't have the AoE to deal with large groups of units, then obviously they're going to get outclassed pretty fast. Okay, I've got to be a bit careful here, because these guys can easily kill me very quickly. Yeah, like this, for example. Okay, oh, help me. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> I was like, yes, help me. And then I ran into all of my units, and then it was just like, yeah, no, I'm going to get shot. Going to get shot. All right, so how, how did we do so far? I think we actually did pretty well, considering, I mean, obviously with the exception of me dying. All right, so we have arrived at the nearby castle. I, uh, I basically just retreated and I was able to leave the battle pretty easily because, of course, once you eliminate a certain amount of units on the enemy side, then you are able to retreat and actually leave the battle rather than surrendering because you have, well, the initiative, I guess. Anyway, as you can see, Nagrat has returned and uh, well, we're about to find out whether the High Elves are willing to... <laughs> oh, no. Uh... They are not willing to do that. 36,000. Little bit too much for me. Little bit too much. But welcome back, friend. And um, we have now built the ladders. Now, let me tell you, there's only 167 units in the garrison here. So we are probably going to have a somewhat easy time. But it really depends. Seems like the layout is okay. But I am going to get killed very quickly indeed. I am... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm actually using a new shield. I, uh, I forgot to mention that the shield is the tournament shield. Apparently you get that from the first tournament that you win. And uh, it has a thousand durability, a hundred size, and about 20 resistance. Which 
I gotta say was much better than my previous shield with the exception of the size of course. And usually I do like a pretty large covering shield because if you don't have a large shield then it is going to make it a little easier for ranged units to get through and actually hit you. So you know take from that what you will maybe uh, some people would prefer to have a lower durability but a higher size and so on and so forth but anyway I think my ranged units right here are gonna have the uh, well the run of the mill run, run of the mill no <laughs> run of the keep I guess we could say they are they're certainly not run of the mill I apologize I apologize we'll block engineers they're gonna shoot me in the face now aren't they Alright, so we're doing a little bit of an offensive maneuver here, a little bit more than previously of course, because there aren't too many units in the garrison here, so I think that taking this chance just to eliminate these people a little bit quicker is a good idea, and wow, they're already dead up here, okay. Well, don't mind me then, I'm just going to come up here and apparently have problems with the stairs because my weapon is so large, okay, that's kind of... Oh, that's kind of annoying, isn't it? Oh well, never mind. Okay, well, ah, we lost one of our savage ogre man-eaters. That's not very good, but I think I'm actually going to die here. Maybe. Uh, no, up go. Okay, apparently not. Apparently not. I'm very surprised about that. I actually thought that I was going to get shot point blank and die instantly. Alright, so I'm actually going to tell my ranged units to charge in now because I could potentially die here. It is more than likely I will perish. Yep, there we go. That's a death, but that's all right. I don't, I don't really mind as long as I disrupted their firing for a little bit of time. I don't really need, you know, eons <laughs> to distract them or anything like that. You can see here that our ranged units are going to come in, and hopefully they do have a little bit of ranged capability still remaining in their pouches. I guess you could, you could say. I mean, I don't know where they keep all their all their ammunition, but yeah, there you go, and uh, that's it. That is indeed a victory. Let's take a look at the uh, casualty screen. Well, there's four renown and 18 morale, and otherwise we lost seven units. Two of those were rat ogres, which is a pretty costly thing to lose. But uh, yes, once the market is built in Karak Hearn, I will be able to go back there and start construction on the War Academy, which is what I've been wanting to do since the beginning of our faction creation. But obviously I didn't have enough money and, well... Now that I do, I should be able to get a pretty decent thing going. Anyway, Lord Measles, I suppose he's going to be getting this one. There we go. Alright, we're probably going to need to make someone else a vassal relatively soon, and I think Aketi is probably going to be the one that we make a vassal. He needs to level up one more time, and then I will give him 21 charisma and 7 in leadership. I personally feel like he is going to be a fantastic vassal. He'll run around... Probably with Skaven units. I think I think the Skaven are our culture at the moment, so obviously he's not going to have specific units to his own race. In other words, that would be Dark Elves, of course. But I think that's good enough as it is, because really, I think Skaven units are pretty powerful at the moment. At least their ranged units are. And uh, let's have a look at Azulok here as well. He's been doing a pretty good job. He's been getting a lot of kills, but obviously I'm not really going to think about giving him leadership, even though he does have the 15 charisma. All right, so we have now taken that, and we are expanding our... <laughs> hmm, yes, this town over here is kind of bothering me, so I think we're actually going to go back and see what we can do about that. I would very much like to capture it, if at all possible, because us getting that connection and solidifying our hold over this area is a really important thing to do and if we don't do it then obviously we're going to continually have annoying empire vassals sneaking in and attempting to raid our villages whenever and wherever they want basically okay so we do have a couple of things being besieged here but that's nothing to worry about i can take that back very very easily indeed if you just go in with your ranged units most of these places can be taken in under three minutes literally it's very very quick anyway Let's have a look and see what the town is doing. Hopefully those dwarves have left. They have not. They have not left. I am surprised. Very surprised. Okay. Well, let's have a look at the next best thing then. <laughs> uh, it would be a pretty cool thing if we could take a town in this episode, but uh, we'll see. Ah, there we go. The market has been completed in Karakhan, so I will be able to go over there and start building the War Academy. This is certainly not going to work. 
having Balthasar in there is not a good thing whatsoever. Wow, this is this is pretty crazy. Are we at war against the Bretonians? Yes, we are. So technically, I could take something there, but that's a bit too bitty, if you know what I mean. I don't really want to go and take a, a, a castle randomly in some person's territory because it's just not going to stay ours for very long at all. So I'd like to try and get a little bit, well, maybe a little bit more solidification through here. Ah, your reputation spreads throughout the land. Gain right to rule. There we go. We're actually starting to gain passive right to rule right now. But if you take a look, I actually have 47 right to rule. So I'm, I'm okay. You know, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty, pretty all right. But uh, you can see here that I have one enemy right now. Woodlord Elander. Yes, I've, I've picked on him quite a bit because he continually comes back to raid my villages. And uh, we can't have that, can we? All right, so there's one dwarf here. 431. Uh, 431. It would be pretty good because it would connect this little section of territory here. So it would be okay. And the dwarf only has 53, so technically it could work. Hmm. Okay, I guess we're going to just try it out. And we'll see how it goes. Alright, so I'm actually just going to wait here for some time. Make sure that I've got enough HP. Alright, so we're heading into a completely different castle. And uh, I actually wanted to, obviously as I said before, I wanted to take one of those towns. But a vassal with 222 turned up. And yeah, you know, I'd be able to probably defeat him, but it is then giving valuable time and obviously draining our valuable resources in comparison to the Empire, who is obviously then capable of probably taking something back or being able to, uh, you know, let one of the other factions get an opportunity on us. And I'm not a big fan of that, you know, so I'd like to try and push our advantage as far as it can go. And that means trying to take even more castles in the area and uh, maybe maybe we could actually just take the whole right side of the empire for the moment and then focus on the sort of central part a little bit later on because at the moment the central part seems very well defended and that's something that we need to be very cautious of because if we make one wrong mistake we're gonna have an entire army of 400 just evaporate like in an instant. So, yeah, that would probably not be the best idea. I'm gonna get killed, am I? Oh no, I'm actually surviving, I'm, I'm amazed. All right, well, there we go, let's just run this way. I am losing a couple of rat ogres here and everything, but I think it's kind of worth, maybe? I think it's kind of worth, maybe? Hmm. It really depends. Obviously, the War Academy is going to be coming up in, uh, I think it's going to take about 50 days, so that's quite a significant amount of time, but once it's up, we will be able to, well, hopefully recruit as many wonderful, very, very strong units as we, as we can handle, I guess, but otherwise I'm ready to do a little bit of damage with my ball and chain here, and obviously we do have a huge amount of ranged units outside, ah, outside. And those great swords, ugh, that, that, I wouldn't be surprised if that literally just sliced Slive in two pieces, because really, that was, that's a crazy big weapon that he's got there. Anyway, I think that will be it for this particular siege, and, uh, well, it's just gonna take one more charge in, I guess. Uh, it seems like we have a pretty significant amount of diplomatic shifting going on, and we have the Araby declaring an alliance with the Empire, which is actually a pretty big deal, because that means now that... Yes, mm, it means this. The Sultanate is now going to be fighting us. And personally, I've always found like the Araby vassals do tend to be quite strong. They tend to be having a pretty considerable amount of units every single time, and they always have significantly strong units too. But uh, yeah, anyway, as you can see right here, I'm actually just waiting until these ladders get built. You know, it's actually pretty awesome doing this at night because, uh, well, even though it doesn't really offer too much in the way of a gameplay advantage in any way, it does look very cool, especially with the custom skybox that you can see up at the top there. That's really, really cool. And uh, I'm just hopeful that I will actually survive here. <laughs> Me surviving is probably 
a good idea, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look and see how many units are remaining. I'm going to actually jump down here if I can and not die. There we go. And uh, now that we have a pretty decent amount of money as well, I think I'm probably going to go into the arena as soon as I can and speak to the guy there and try and buy. I knew that guy was going to get me. I saw him. I saw him aiming at me and I was like, is he aiming at me? <laughs> yes, he was. That is the answer there. But anyway, I'm going to speak to that guy in the arena and get Ignore Pain. But obviously that's going to cost me, what, 12,000? So I think we're I think we're well away in terms of being able to afford that. I have about 80,000 in the treasury right now. And I have about, what, 15,000 on me? So I think I should be able to afford it without too many difficulties. Now let's see. I'm going to try and take some decent enough units here. Obviously, all of these units are, are are being enslaved. They are being enslaved in a roleplay sense, of course. And uh, they will be placed into the garrison as soon as possible. I do not want to keep these in my army for any kind of foreseeable future. Because, as I say, I like to roll with thematic units as much as possible. Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, no, that's pretty terrible loot. I'm not going to take any of that. Let's defer appointment of a lord for this one. Technically, I could raid this. I could plunder it. Do I want to do that? I, I guess we could plunder it and share the spoils equally. Oh, there you go. 2,600. I guess that's not too bad. And uh, we do have a couple of vassals on the outside here, but I don't think we need to worry about those. I, I now have 63 Warplock Engineers available to level up. We now have 88 Poisoned Wind Globadiers total, which I think is a bit too much. So I'm going to have to start leveling some of those into Warplock Engineers and going from there. Let's actually level up. Uh, yeah, maybe about... Maybe we can get about 60 of those guys? Yeah, why not? I think that seems pretty good. Anyway, I think that will be it for this episode. And uh, next time, I think we're probably going to be trying to take this town, because as I said, it seems like the right side of the Empire is a little bit less well defended than the central areas over there. And what? Oh. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I don't think that I took anything over here. No, it's apparently the Chaos Dwarves. They apparently have the exact same color as what I selected. So we are all brought together by a love of cheese. Yes, apparently that's what's going on here. Anyway, that will be it. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.